hit the scratch web page. Getting ready to make our first program. So follow along as I go and then I'll ask you to do a more complicated thing at the end of the session. So we're going to click on the create tab to get to the programming area and we're back where we were before. I'm going to get rid of the little tutorial and here's our scratch cat sprite and some instructions and they act just like they did before. I can click on one and the cat moves a little bit. Now most instructions need to be added to other ones to make a full program. Programs do more interesting things than just move the cat across the stage. So I'm going to drag an instruction over here to what's called the scripting area. In this area we can build up a collection of instructions to make our program. A script is just a simple kind of small program. I can also start modifying the instructions. Here it says move 10 steps. If I click on the 10 and change it to something like 50, now the cat will make bigger steps. Notice that the cat starts to go off the stage, but Scratch tries to keep a little bit showing so that I can click on the sprite and bring it back where I want it. For the last assignment, you played a little bit with the turn command, so you started to see what it did. For those of you who don't know what degrees are, degree a degree is basically how much something turns. 15 degrees is sort of a small turn. We can change this number as well to make bigger turns. So if I click on turn 90 degrees, it basically goes from facing to the right to facing down. And now it faces left, faces up, and then faces forward again. So four of those turns went all the way around in a circle. Let's try to combine these commands so that it moves and turns every time we click on it. I'm going to take this turn 90 degree command and add it to the block that was already there. Notice there's a little white line that shows up and when I release the mouse button the two are joined together. So I clicked, held the mouse button and dragged it over and released it close to where I wanted the command to go. Now these two act as a single kind of set of blocks. I can move them around together. If I click on this, the cat moves forward and turns. The computer looks at the first command, does it, and then the second command and does that. It does them pretty fast, so we can't really see them as separate actions. We just see it move and turn, move and turn. I'm going to click this again and again and again. It's a little hard to tell what the cat's doing. So I'm going to add one more instruction to help us understand how it's moving around the stage. Under the pen set of blocks, there's a pen down command, and I'm going to add that to the top of these instructions. So that's the first thing the computer is going to do. Each sprite has a little pen basically in its center, and it leaves a little trail behind it when you give the pen down command. So if I click on this, we can start to see a little bit of a line left behind as the cat moves. I'm going to click it on again, and again, and again, and we made a square. Notice this is not really a program that makes a square. It makes a side of a square, and we had to click on it four times to make the actual square. Let's try to make a program that makes an actual square with one click on the block. To do that, we need to do more move and turn commands. Right now, it only does enough for one side, so we need enough to do enough for four sides. We can go back to motion, grab another move command and add it to the bottom, change it so it moves the same number of steps as before, 50. Grab the turn, change that to 90. And now if I move the cat to a new area and do pen down, it's done not a full square, but not just one side. It's done two sides of a square because it moved, turned, moved, and turned. If I click on it again, it finishes the square off for me. Let's take a moment and I want you to finish it off so it does all four sides with one click. To do that, you need to do another move and another turn, 
and another move in another turn. Move the cat to another area and test it out and see if it works. So go ahead and pause the video and then we'll come back and see if we had the same answer. So I jumped ahead and put my full square making program here. There's a pen down so it starts to leave the trail behind it. It moves and turns for one side of the square, moves and turns for the other side of the square, moves and turns for the third side of the square, and move and turn for the fourth side of the square. If I click on it, it makes a square. Notice it's happened so fast this time we really didn't see the cat move, but it was doing it just, just very fast. Now my screen's starting to get a little crowded. If I want to make a bunch of squares, I can. But it's getting harder to test my program without running into other squares. Back in the pen area, there's the clear command. I'm going to drag that over and not attach it to the other program, but leave it there where I can use it. Anytime I want to clear the screen now, I can just click the clear command and all my other stuff goes away. Now, this repeating of commands was easy enough, but you can imagine if I was making a shape that had a lot of sides, that would start to get kind of boring making all those different move and turn, move and turn, move and turn. So I'm going to show you a new command to make it easier for us to repeat an action over and over again. In the control area, there's a command called repeat, and right now it has a 10 in it. And it's a funny jaw-shaped little instruction. I'm just going to move that out here where we can take a look at it. Any instructions that are inside the jaws here happen as many times as we say up here. So I'm going to grab one chunk of move and turns. All I did was click on the move and kind of tear it off from the other instructions. And I'm going to place it in the middle of those jaws. I'm going to move the other stuff around a little bit so we can arrange things nicely. If I said repeat 2 here and click on it, it does these instructions twice. It moves and turns and then repeats it one more time. Move and turn. So I made two sides of a square here. I'm going to click on it again to finish the square. If I wanted to make this be an actual square with one click, we know there's four sides to the square, so I'm going to say repeat four. Now when I try it out, it makes all four sides of the square. So you, hopefully you can see that this kind of program is a little easier to write than repeating all those instructions over and over again. And we can start to have fun with this now that we have this little more flexible setup. For example, let's make this a little bit bigger, like move 80. And let's turn something besides 90 degrees, so it's no longer going to be a square. I'm going to say something like turn 115 degrees. When I click on it, it makes a shape sort of a triangle, but not quite. It does, it's not quite finished off. Let's clear it again. And let's repeat more times, like 10 times. I click on it now, you can see it's starting to make sort of an inter interesting pattern. If I clear it and click on it a couple times in a row, so I click it once, click it twice, click it again, and again, and again, and again, and again. I've made a kind of a cool shape here. It's sort of a star with a whole bunch of points. If I change this turn to something else, like 130, it's going to make a slightly different kind of star. That one's pretty nice also. What I want you to try to do is make it so you figure out how many repeats you need to finish the star off. In this case, 10 wasn't enough. It only made like a little portion of the star, so I had to keep clicking on it. I want you to experiment like, oh, is 20 times enough? Try. No, 20 wasn't enough. 
Let's try again. 30. Does that make a finished star? Closer, but not quite. So keep experimenting with a turn number and how many repeats you do to try to make a perfect superstar. A nice star with lots of shapes without any of these little dangly lines poking out the end. So give that a try and have fun with it.